gonna do? Yeah, dollar. Or crypto bull guy. And his crypto maniacs. And the entire cryptocurrency market run wild on you. Welcome in. I am the Crypto Bull God, and this is the recorded on a Tuesday, airing on Tuesday, November 23rd, 2021 CBG podcast slash TA video. So I very much look forward to getting these um, podcasts released on Tuesdays, and uh, I also felt that the uh, community would be very well served by a TA video. Didn't really have time to do kind of both this week. So decided to sort of make a hybrid uh, podcast slash TA video. So we're definitely going to be getting into charts. But hey, you can find me on Twitter, YouTube, TradingView, and Instagram for some motivational workout videos uh, at Crypto Bull God. So um, my drink, by the way, uh, of the day right now that I'm really enjoying in my Wolverine glass, been a huge Wolverine fan all my life. It is a nice coffee, so let me tell you real quick before we get into things how I made this. So, quite proud of myself because it tastes very good. So, it's cold brew coffee, Crypto Bringer. It's not Jameson cold brew, although that is very good. It's just cold brew coffee. You can get it at the supermarket. Some coconut milk, some uh, collagen vanilla flavor protein powder, ice, and then a little splash of eggnog. But I'm not talking regular eggnog. You can actually get like the almond milk eggnog, so I put a splash in there. Is very tasty, so I'm enjoying that right now. So let's get into things. Um, You know, I wanted to get into a quick update on uh, Bitcoin and try to relieve some of the stress that's currently in the market. Um, Actually, before we do that, real quick, I did want to comment. There is another channel that I participate in with my brother. It's uh, Crypto Bros. There's been a few podcast episodes that's been released on my channel. You know, at some point moving forward, I'm not going to keep releasing these videos uh, on my channel. Please check out that content. Uh, my brother has a way of bring, bringing in the reins and making sure that, um, you know, we're helping to educate the audience on everything cryptocurrency related. Uh, and we're doing it in layman's terms. You know, he's coming at it from a non-mathematical angle. Super smart guy, but he's coming at it from a non-analytical mathematical angle. I'm the analytics guy, right? So I think that it's a great balance and we've known each other all of our lives are technically uh, almost four years we haven't known each other if um, we want to get technical, which I know that uh, he, he has he has indicated. So anyway, um, you know, and actually before we get in, another thing I wanted to get out, uh, mention before we get into things, an update on the video, I actually wanted to thank everyone because, you know, I was taking a look back and I saw that on Twitter here um, on December 30th. I had, I think it was 555 followers, and I am 37 followers away uh, in late November from hitting 7,000 followers, you know, and that far exceeded any expectations that I had. Um, Never really considered where I'd be at at the end of the year. I do know that I try to stay as active as I can. Things are a little bit more challenging with that right now. I keep saying without going into detail that will change next year. I'll be a lot more active. Um, but for now, to get roughly uh, like a 14x on my followers, um, that's, I just want to say thank you, thank you very much. And speaking of giving thanks, you know, Thanksgiving is coming up. And um, something that is, it's been on my mind all day, so I just wanted to quick share this. You know, no matter where you're at in life, um, I think it's a great perspective um, to always be in a place where you feel blessed and thankful for everything that you have in life. You know, and there are a lot of people out there um, who are a lot less fortunate um, than you for whatever whatever reason. Um, but even at, if you're at a place in life and you're going through a lot of personal struggles, um, you know, I think sometimes it's easy to get down on yourself and realize that there are um, a lot of people in um, much more... Um, unfortunate circumstances, so um, situations. So to the degree that you can, I think it's great to volunteer um, your time. You know, if you can get out there at some point this season, um, help some people out. Um, You know, I I personally view time as the most valuable commodity that you have. I think donation, donations of monetary value, donating your money. 
I mean, I think is a very selfless act. You know, you know, I'm sure everyone listening works very hard for everything they bring in the door. But to me, time, giving up your time, which is the most valuable possession that you own, um, and giving it up for those, um, like I said, who are less fortunate, all right, sorry, I had a little glitch there. But like I was saying, I think that if you can get out there and volunteer your time to others, we all have busy lives, myself included. Um, just something to think about, something to consider. Um, so give that some thought um, if you're not already. So with that being said, the first thing I'm going to do here, see, these are the things you can't see when I'm doing the uh, CBG podcast <clears throat> because it's, it's generally audio only. I have a little script here, so I'm just looking at my little script, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get into a quick update on Bitcoin. And so I'm going to do this a few ways. I'm going to take a look at a few different time frames with you, and I'm going to share with you um, why I'm not concerned. Uh, I'll tell you my cur current thoughts in, in terms of uh, market cycle tops, um, my own personal frame of mind, and then kind of what to look for. This is a 12-hour chart. If you've been on this channel um, for a while now, you know the importance of the 12-hour chart. There's only one moving average here. It's this pink line. It's the 200 simple moving average on a 12-hour chart. Think to yourself, when have I mentioned this before? I have said repeatedly that it is extremely important that candle body closes, not price wicks, because they are an expression of volatility. So we can wick below the 200 simple moving average, but historically what is important is to remain um, above the 200 simple moving average from a candle body close perspective, okay? And I'm not going to go back in history and show you all the times where this is kind of played out to prove my point. You can actually go back to an earlier video, which if I have the time, I'll try and find for you where I do point it out. But you can see in recent times here, Back in September, you can see we had some price wicks below the 200 SMA. We remained above it, right? And we continued to push up towards, you know, nearly 70,000. Um, we hit 69,000. 69. That's the 12-year-old in me. Now, here, what you can see is we did not respect the 200 simple moving average, right? So back when we had our massive correction in May where prices became overextended, you can see this candle body right here, okay? We had a huge candle, huge red candle right there, okay? Now, this was not a price wick below the 200 simple moving average. This was a candle body close below the 200 simple moving average. So you can see that from the 12th of May all the way until here, which was the end of July, okay? So um, that would be about two and a half months. So for roughly two and a half months, we stayed below the 200 simple moving average on the 12 hour view because we got a candle body closed below it. I would encourage you pull up a 12 hour view on Bitcoin to, um, uh, to convince yourself that what I'm saying is true. And that is that on the 12 hour view, the thing that you want to see is you want to see conviction and strength above the 200 simple moving average. I don't see anyone else tweeting about this. I don't see any of videos about this, which is really interesting. No one else talks about this. Um, this is definitely one thing that I've seen on crypto, Twitter, and on YouTube that I haven't seen anyone else talk about. Now, you can see a huge green zone of resistance that I've kept in here. It looks like it's you know in between like 53 and 48,000 roughly. I had tweeted about it a while ago. But the important thing to keep in mind on a 12-hour view Let's respect this 200 simple moving average. It's at 57,000, basically 53,600. One other quick comment before we move to another time frame. A lot of people have been talking about 53,000, 53,000, 53,000, 53,000. Bitcoin's going to 53,000. Personally, I was looking for 54,000. 54 and 53 were splitting hairs. The point is, is oftentimes Bitcoin likes to do what most do not expect. So it wouldn't shock me to see us wick down and entertain levels close to the 200 simple moving average on the 12 hour chart. But it wouldn't surprise me for everyone to be wrong and for Bitcoin to never get down to $53,000. And we've already bottomed, it looks like at 55,000. Okay. That wouldn't surprise me one bit. 55,400 on the Coinbase exchange. So that's what I would keep an eye on, on the 12 hour chart. So far, price levels are respecting 
um, levels above the 200 simple moving average. So we're good, okay, no concerns. Let's go to the weekly view. This is something I tweeted out. If you're not following me on Twitter at Crypto Bull God, um, I don't know why you're not because I'm constantly tweeting out charts, important charts like this. This is an inverse head and shoulders. It's the opposite of a head and shoulders bearish pattern. This is a bullish inverse head and shoulders pattern. There's no concerns here. Um, all the moving averages are flowing within the context of what you wanna see for price movement. You can see the blues above the green, above the orange. That's what we had down here, right? You can see down here when we had that similar cross that we have here, that's what led to our price move up here. So I don't see anything that's concerning uh, on the weekly view. Now, the, before I get to this monthly view, it's important to point out that, uh, you know, and these are consistent things that I've communicated on this channel, the more we zoom out on the chart, okay, and there's more price data that is contained within each candlestick, because what does candlestick, what does a candlestick actually represent? Again, it, one candlestick represents price action, okay, this is, this is price action, right? So this, this green candlestick here is price action, but it's price action within what time frame? Well, this is a weekly view. So all of the price action here between roughly 42 and here up to 55,000, this candlestick, this took place in one week because we're in a weekly view. When we're looking at a 12 hour chart, every candlestick here represents price action within 12 hours, right? The more we zoom out and the more candlesticks contain higher level price information, higher time frames like this monthly view, um, the more conviction we can have behind what it is that we're seeing in the chart. Just to kind of take a step back for a moment before I go over this, just to further illustrate the point. By the way, you like this shirt? This is a brand new shirt. You like this shirt? Um, hey, if you haven't yet, like the uh, video. Drop a comment. Let me know if the shirt's hideous. Let me know if the shirt is nice. Um, but anyway, uh, just to give you an example, I can go on TradingView right now and I can pull up a five second chart. So every candlestick represents five seconds of price data. I could go on TradingView and I could pull up a three month chart. Every single candlestick is three months of price action. The more we zoom out, um, the more, and it depends how much price data and how many years of data you have, but in general, the more credibility there is behind the view that you're seeing because there's more price action within each candlestick. And I hope that of course, makes sense. Um, so let's talk about what we're seeing here. Is there anything concerning here? Well, this is the November candlestick. You know, this isn't the greatest candlestick. I'd like to see November close higher than where we're at. You know, we still have roughly, I think it's eight days. But price action is above all moving averages. The 10 is above the 20, which is above the 50. And price action right now, this candlestick is above all these moving averages down here, right? So what I'm saying is this candlestick is above this moving average, this moving average, and this moving average. Everything's going up. I don't see anything concerning. Let's look at the price indicators. So if we go to the price indicators, what we can see is let's look first at the stochastic RSI. Now, typically what you'll see if we move back in time is when we've topped, look at these monthly candles, the stochastic RSI is way up here in like this, this 90 range, right? Just like we topped temporarily up here, right? And topped temporarily up here. Look at the top here, corresponds to here. The top here corresponds to here. Look at the stochastic RSI right now. First off, the blue line, okay, what you should notice, the blue line is above the orange, which is great. That's what we wanna see, it's a bullish cross. Second, we got a lot of room. Look at how high this thing has to go up before it gets up here in the 190 range, right? We're all the way down here at 27. Look, we're all the way, read the, I'm pointing to the screen like you can see it. I do this pretty commonly. Look at the upper left-hand corner of the screen and look at the stochastic RSI reading. It says 27.03, okay? We have a lot of room to run. Stochastic RSI looks good, no, no concerns there. Now let's go to the excuse me, let's go to the RSI. RSI is looking great. RSI is looking great. 68, a reading of 68 is a um, bullish level to be at. It's not bearish. It's uh, not overbought. It's not oversold. It's at a solid level. That's the way you can think it. The relative strength indica indicator, relative strength index is at a solid level, 68. We're feeling good, 68.36, okay? 
Um, typically, again, if we look at the price chart here, when we've gotten cycle tops, look how high the RSI is here. Look how high the RSI is here. And people have pointed this out in previous times that there's typically a double top here. But um, you can see the price level that RSI likes to top at for Bitcoin on the monthly historically right up here is, again, it looks like right in this high upper mid 90 range. We're sitting at 68. We have a lot of room to move up. No concerns. MACD is looking pretty fucking epic. Um, this is what you want to see. You want to see, I mean, this is beautiful. Uh, I don't know how else to put this. Let me put this into layman's terms for everyone who doesn't know how to read a MACD. You want to see the blue above the orange. Um, look at this thing trending up. I don't, I don't have any concerns here. Okay. In fact, this high here that we saw back here, this chart's getting a little messy. The high we saw right here, okay, this high right here corresponds to up here. We're already printing a new high in the MACD as we speak as price level has been increasing in value. I don't see any concerns in the monthly view. Now, one thing um, I'm not going to get into and I will consider uh, putting out a video um, if I have the time, um, which I'm hoping to, it's been on my mind and I'm not gonna cover it in this video, are kind of the top charts and the top data science models that I personally will be looking at to tell me uh, if most likely Bitcoin has topped or is very close to topping, okay? But what I can assure you is, on top of me sharing with you that there's nothing concerning on the 12 hour, the weekly or the monthly view that I see, none of the data science models or charts I look at to tell me if Bitcoin has topped or the crypto cycle has topped, have told me that we've had a cycle market top. So I want you to keep in mind this point because this is the most important point of this entire TA update. The market has not topped. I have consistently told you I never guarantee anything on this channel. And I have told you my primary hypothesis was that Bitcoin was going to top in December of this year. Okay, so while I can tell you with conviction that crypto, Bitcoin, all the cryptocurrency assets have not topped, I can't tell you at this point whether or not we're going to top in December like I had originally stated. Okay, I think based on where price levels are at, what we should do is remain patient and see how November closes. Okay, right now, you know, if I kind of follow things on a daily basis, I expected Bitcoin to be around 70 in the $70,000 range. So, you know, looking at it from that perspective on a more zoomed in view, I would say price is below where I anticipated it to be. Okay, so I want to see how we close out November. And that's going to tell me with more conviction from a timing perspective when I think Bitcoin will top. And again, kind of to reiterate a lot of the things I've said in prior podcast episodes, if you have the knowledge and education and feel convicted that cryptocurrencies have not had their cycle top, um, but the most difficult thing, as I've indicated in prior podcasts and TA videos, is timing is really the most difficult thing. What if Bitcoin topped in January? What if my primary hypothesis is incorrect, which it is increasingly looking that way, okay? Bitcoin's going to have to do something pretty special within the next eight days and move up, you know, 35, 40% for me to feel convicted that December it's still going to top. So let's hold off. Let's wait to see how November closes. But what if Bitcoin topped in January? What if it topped in February or March? Well, keep in mind two things again, as this is the most important point of this entire TA update. One, I feel convicted. We have not topped. It's just a matter of timing. Okay, have patience. And number two, the other thing that I stress to you is the more time that elapses, okay, with when cryptocurrencies will top and the cycle will top, theoretically, if there's more time, it allows for greater price appreciation. So in a sense, if you're patient and understand that the cycle hasn't topped, and it actually extends out maybe three months. Let's just say Bitcoin tops in March. Okay, let's just throw out March as, an, as a month. Um, that actually is a good thing. It's a good thing because it allows for greater time for the price to move even higher 
than many are expecting. Okay. If you recall, you know, one of the things I jotted down to myself, I wanted to make sure to um, hit on and further illustrate this is if you remember back in this time frame, let's get off this messy chart. If you remember back in this time frame here, we'll look at the weekly view. Okay. When we were when we were moving straight up here, right? All this price movement up here to 60,000. I said back then, look, there's a chance if we start topping earlier than what people think, you know, maybe Bitcoin tops in July and the blow off top, that euphoric top that will come into the market, it's gonna be lower than what a lot of people are thinking because the cycle is topping a lot lower in term, the, the cycle is topping a lot sooner than what people are anticipating. So a smaller amount of time has elapsed to allow the price to appreciate in value. Now, a lot of the things that I do on an audio podcast where I'm using my hands, you can see me. Um, whereas if we extend the cycle out and let's say instead of Bitcoin topping at this point in time here in December, if we extended it all the way out to let's say mid-March, March 12th, it allows for more time for price to consolidate and go up. And hopefully that makes sense. And as far as I did want to make a comment on this whole lengthening cycle, because it really irritates me, I don't see evidence for an extensive lengthening of the cycle. If Bitcoin were to top, if I'm incorrect in Bitcoin tops in January or Bitcoin tops in February, and I would even argue March, I wouldn't really call that a lengthening cycle if it topped maybe a month, two months or three months later. If we start talking about Bitcoin extending all the way out into the late half of next year, 2022, or going into the end of 2022, then yeah, we can talk about a lengthening cycle. But if Bitcoin were to top a month or two months out, further out than what I was anticipating and what some others were anticipating, that's not a lengthening cycle in my opinion, arguably. I would say inarguably, but I guess arguably. Um, because technically you could say it's a lengthening cycle if it lengthened by 30 days or 40 days. But I guess... Why get caught up in the semantics of that? You know, what I'm trying to reiterate to you is um, at this point in time where price is at, I feel less convicted that Bitcoin will top in December. At this point in time, I do. I feel less convicted that we're going to top in December. But nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. And the main thing I focus on, the question, have we topped? Have we topped? Which should be the most important question to you. Have we topped? And the answer is no. The answer is unequivocally no. Okay? There are too many charts and data science models I look at that say, no, 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 no. We haven't topped. It's just a matter of kind of figuring out when. So please, for the love of God, because I've had people reach out to me with all sorts of questions and comments, don't become impatient right now. I keep reiterating this, and I have this written down here. You know, I, I've stated that for you to maximize your opportunity within this crypto cycle, and it's going to be here and gone in a blink of an eye, you need to remain unemotional. You, you really need to be doing your own diligence and due diligence and homework. You can't just rely on myself and you can't just rely on other people on Twitter or YouTube. That is foolish. You should be doing your own due diligence and you should be utilizing other helpful technicians in the space like myself to formulate a well-informed decision. And if you're doing that and you're remaining logical about it, you will be part of the small percentage that maximize your opportunity uh, in this crypto bull cycle. If you don't and you allow your emotions to take control of you, um, you will not maximize your opportunity. Another quick couple quick charts I wanted to hit on real quick. Uh, Ethereum here kind of tweeted about it. We're consolidating within, we're coiling up in the RSI here on the weekly view. This is a weekly view on Ethereum. We broke out of our downward black line of resistance here. Let's focus on price data. Right now we've back tested an area of support around 3,900. This really should be a red line, which I never updated because red is what? An area of resistance. Green is what? An area of support. What, what? Um, anyone ever watch the, um, anyone ever watch the cartoon, The Tick? What, 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 what? Drop me a comment if you have, or like, I used to watch that, uh, I won't say what age, cause that'll give things away, but I used to watch that. Saturday, Saturday, Mark, Saturday morning cartoons, The Tick. Very good episode. Magic eight ball what? Okay. I'm sure 1% of you know what I'm talking about, 
But based upon the demographics that YouTube tells me who listens and watches this stuff, it seems everyone is between the age of 20, I think it's 25 to 44. And I do fit within that demographic. So maybe, um, maybe you have watched the tick. But anyway, there's nothing concerning here. The RSI is coiling up. There's a little bit of negative divergence I feel will be negated at some point. Uh, we want to see this downward line here get broken. You can see we had touches here, touches here. I want to see the RSI break out above this level and price data to continue to move up. I don't want to see us fall below this downward line. This is on a weekly view once again. Um, nothing really concerning here to me. I mean, price is just consolidating. I mean, people really get, people really don't understand what price consolidation is. Price consolidation is not like this. Price consolidation can be like this. Price consolidation can be like this, or it can be like this. Okay, it's not just a freaking straight line, right? Um, this is Harmony 1, wanted to pull this one up. Where are we at right now? We are at, we're up 16%. Cheers, Harmonox. Another indicator that we're not going to enter a massive bear market and you really need to calm the fuck down is that you keep having alts pop off, okay? This is Harmony 1. Um, this thing's going to break its all-time high of 40 cents very shortly here. Uh, I just tweeted out a bunch about this. The price indicators, KST is going to cross. MACD looks great. Stochastic RSI, this is on the weekly, looks great. It's about to cross positive. Uh, RSI is great. It's at 70, 71. This is on the daily. This isn't a green Jesus candle, but it's a pretty epic green candle. Things are looking great in the market, right? H-bar, I'm expecting to pop off soon. We're in this massive cup and handle. We're just consolidating in the handle. People are getting salty and, you know, impatient. Um, I do anticipate breaking up towards the 46 to 58 cent area here in the coming, uh, you know, I don't know, a couple weeks, several days. Who knows? These things can pop off real quick. The point is, uh, we're in a massive consolidation right now in the handle within a cup and handle. So there's nothing overly concerning here. You know, Bitcoin can make very unexpected moves. So it's very important that you're remaining level-headed and knowing um, why you're invested in this market and, you know, what your risk tolerance level is and what your exit strategy is. And something I wanted to point out here before I forget to further illustrate my point, boy, this... Oof, this chart got so messy so quickly. Please don't save that. It saved it. Uh, I'm going to have to clean that up. Um, let's go back. Look at this. This chart auto-adjusts. Or I don't have it on auto-adjust. Let's go back. Let's go back in time real quick. Move my beautiful face out of the way. And let's take a look at... I want to show you how quickly price can appreciate because this is what I mean. Let's take a look at the November all the way up to the all-time high and see how far price moved up. And I think it was like 255% is what I looked at. So at the beginning of November right here, if we measure from the price wick, which is that area of volatility where price went all the way down in November, all the way up to the high, yeah, it's, it's like 255%. So you can see, let me just leave this roughly, okay? So what I'm saying is, what this is telling you is that just between November and December, Bitcoin moved up 255%. Now, am I saying to you that Bitcoin will do exactly the same thing? No, that's not what I'm saying. Um, what I'm saying is, I'm saying that when things begin to get euphoric, I keep talking about euphoria, okay? They are going to move very quickly. They will move um, in accordance with movements that while they won't surprise the people who are prepared, like myself, they will still be shocking. They will still be surprising. And they will catch most people off guard. Okay, And that's why it's important to be invested in this market and to be patient. Because if you become impatient and emotional and you sell at a time like this, um, prices really could appreciate 35-40% within a matter of you know five days. And you're going to feel like a pile of shit um, because you didn't know what you were doing. So... Am I telling you that tomorrow Bitcoin is going to start move, making its move up 35%? No. But what I'm saying is we are very close to entering euphoria. And I just don't want anyone to miss this time period. Again, I should have said this at the start of the, just said this at the start of the uh, video. None of what I'm sharing is financial advice, okay? It's up to you to do your own due diligence and homework and make your own informed decisions. I'm here simply as a vehicle um, as an educational resource to help you, hopefully help you make informed decisions. That's all I'm here for. Um, but I'm saying 
The time is very near. And whether I am incorrect on timing, okay, and Bitcoin tops in January or tops in February or March, um, what I feel absolutely convicted is we have not topped and we've got to remain patient and understand that the data science models and the charts are telling us um, we're close. We're getting very close. We just, there's no signs that we've topped. None. I'm not seeing anything. Um, so with that being said, I think, I think that's all I wanted to say on that. Um, let's get into the chart of the week, actually. So the chart of the week is going to be CRV. So CRV or Curve Finance tickles, tickle? Did I just say tickle? Uh, ticker symbol. CRV. So I do have a position in this. It's not a, a large position because I have not taken a deep dive into the fundamentals. And at this point, honestly, at this point in the cycle, my portfolio is what it is for the most part. I'm not going to start jumping around positions. I know I have, a, and I appreciate it. By the way, I appreciate it. I have a lot of people trying to point me in different directions of other assets to invest in. My positions are my positions. I feel good about it. I'm fine. Um, next cycle, I can kind of you know, reformat, redo my portfolio. But for this cycle, I'm pretty well set. But anyway, I do have a position here. I would like to thank uh, Credible Crypto because um, the dude kept tweeting about it, kept tweeting about it. And finally, I was like, all right, I need to take a look at this. So basically what I took a look at, um, let's see here. What I took a look at, and I forget what day I invested in this thing. But I took a look at this consolidation within here, and I think I got in right on this came. I think I got in on the 20th or the 19th, either the 19th or 20th, but I saw a giant bull flag. Okay, this is a bull pennant, okay? These candles, this format, and this view in the chart is too sexy. These candles are too sexy for the chart. Too sexy, it hurts. Um... God, my attempts at humor. Um, but anyway, there's massive consolidation in here, and I've been tweeting about this, and finally we broke up, right? So I got in at the right time. I definitely thank Credible Crypto for pointing this um, project out because, again, my purely me investing in this or at least making taking an initial position in it is just based on the chart setup. It has nothing to do with fundamentals. I have not done any fundamental research on this. Uh, but the chart setup was too beautiful. So I have a position in this that I've handsomely been profiting from. Um, and you can see here the other things that I've been pointing out. KST looks like it's going to cross. By the way, this is on a daily. Sorry, this is on a daily view. The MACD has just crossed. You can see that. Stochastic RSI here. It's another price indicator. It has crossed. The RSI looks good. Again, it's at a really happy place. It's at 63, 62.83, right? So this thing looks primed to make new all-time highs. I anticipate, you know, we're going to have some pullbacks and retest of priors of resistance. Once they're broken, what do they become? Support, right? So let's anticipate that we're going to close above 468, right? I just have this line drawn at 468. So I'll change this to green, anticipating this candle will close back above there. Um, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be shocking to see a candlestick or two kind of, come down and retest this area prior to then making a move up um, towards our prior all-time high at 585, it looks like, 586, and then breaking it. Okay, so I'm anticipating new all-time highs for CRV in the short term here. So take a look at CRV. Again, these comments are just from a TA perspective. I have not done my due diligence on a fundamental perspective, which is something I plan on doing. Actually, I should have some time this weekend, to be honest with you. So um, to be honest with you, you ever, you ever, uh, have you noticed that when you talk to people, like I'm a very honest person, very honest person, but for whatever reason, I pride myself on integrity. And for whatever reason, when I'm talking to people, I use the saying to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, I haven't, uh, I haven't done the uh, fundamental analysis on the, uh, I haven't done the fundamental analysis on uh, curve finance, to be honest with you. Of course I'm being honest with you. Why do I say to be honest with you, I don't, I don't understand that. I have no idea. So I'm sure, drop a comment on that. Are there any sayings that you say with people that you've kind of picked up on that make absolutely no sense in terms of why you're saying it? Eh, I do that. So anyway, CRV is the chart of the week. I'm expecting very big things from this. As you can see from the confusing 
items that I've put up on the chart here. Let me take that off. Um, this is an area of resistance here that looks like it's going to be broken, and we just want to break our all-time high here. This thing looks um, awesome. So what we're going to do now is uh, looking at my uh, look at my notes here. What we're going to do now is we're going to get into uh, Twitter questions, questions of the week. So let's get into them. So the first question, the first Twitter question of the week comes from none other than the crypto bull goddess. So she actually texted me because she is not active on Twitter at the moment. Um, and her question is, why are you so damn sexy? Um, well, that makes two of us. So team buns all the way. All right, and now getting back to the real Twitter questions. So there weren't really too many questions, but in all fairness, I kind of tweeted this out pretty late. Also, engagement, I've noticed, is a little lower on Twitter. Could be the holidays, could also be some saltiness in the market re-entering because we love that saltiness. I drink the tears of the salty noobs who are in this space. Um, for all those who are open-minded and willing to learn, I'm here to educate you to all the salty noobs. Um, piss off. So... Here is a question from Black Chain Token. When Lambo tomorrow? Um, okay, I guess the important question is any correlation between... This is actually a really good question, so thank you for asking the question. So essentially what's being asked here, although you can read it on the screen actually since this is visual, is... Um, the question that's being asked here is... Um, Basically, what the correlation is between Bitcoin, uh, and I would also say crypto, Bitcoin and the stock market. So something that we should understand is um, we have no reason to believe based on current market data, and intuitively it should make sense. We have no reason to believe based on current market data that if there is a major correction in the stock market, that Bitcoin wouldn't suffer as well. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general or a risk on asset. So if the stock market takes a huge hit, people are gonna be selling their cryptocurrencies. If anyone is telling you anything to the contrary, um, I'm open-minded, I'd love to hear their arguments, but I would question the intelligence. There's nothing that shows that if the stock market starts plummeting to this point, 25 to 30%, people are gonna be like, Oh my God, the stock market's correcting 25 to 30%. Time to buy Bitcoin. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Really? It's a risk on asset. So what you have to understand is if that were to happen, look at what happened in March of 2020 when the beer virus hit, okay? The stock market plummeted and Bitcoin and crypto presented a massive buying opportunity. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank my hands for being so great hitting the, the, buy, <laughs> the buy triggers. Um, it corrected as well, right? But what I want to add to this is I think it's funny kind of how data plays out in the charts. I think everything is, um, I don't know, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to take what's in my head right now, what I'm thinking, and actually verbalize it in all seriousness. Um, it's interesting to see how much the data correlates and tends to play out with one another and create a story. So what I mean is the story that I feel like is unraveling is that Bitcoin is in a massive bull cycle. And Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies will be topping, you know, towards the end of this year, you know, first quarter of next year, latest, in my opinion, that I've stated before, first half of next year, okay? So we're in this bull cycle. Cryptocurrencies are going to, you know, go through this euphoric stage. And I think around the time that Bitcoin starts correcting and going into its massive bear market, I do think that as the cryptocurrencies are retracing in price values significantly, there is going to be some form of a correction within the stock market. I can't tell you to what magnitude, but I don't see, for example, I've indicated this before. Once we have that euphoric blow off top and everything just gets, you know, astronomical in value, you know, Harmony One hits like two, three bucks. Uh, you know, each bar hits five dollars, four dollars, whatever. Bitcoin hits two hundred and you know fifty thousand, whatever it hits. Um, once all that euphoria ends and the prices start to retrace massively, because I've said there's nothing in the data that says otherwise, your altcoins retrace 90, 95%, 99%. Bitcoin retraces 80, 85%, whatever the case is. Um, I, you know, 
I don't know what, what what point the stock market will correct, but I I feel that it's highly uh, probable that the stock market will undergo um, some some turbulent times. To what degree? I actually have to put a little bit more analysis into what happened the last time we had our major correction in 2018 going into 2019. But what I can tell you, what I can tell you is from the data that I recall analyzing, there is nothing to suggest that if the, if the stock market, to specifically answer your question, there's nothing to suggest that if the stock market undergoes a major correction that Bitcoin and cryptos wouldn't suffer. But I also, I need to put a little bit more analysis into what I'm about to say, but I do feel like once we go through our major correction after the euphoric top, I think the stock market is going to have some sort of correction. I just need to do a little bit more homework there to kind of more provide more specificity surrounding that statement. Let's get into, so thank you again. Thank you for the questions. Very good question. Let's get into the next question. One of my, uh, one of my favorite followers, actually. I always appreciate the, um, the engagement and I love the username. Len Wambo. Um, Pertaining to BTC, what's your opinion on purchasing BTC versus investing in a BTC ETF? Why am I putting my hands behind me like I'm about to give a presentation at work? Uh, peace out. That won't be happening soon. But anyway, um, so uh, this is actually a great question. I sort of, I don't know if this is intentional or not, but you know, my brother and I on Crypto Bros, yeah, let me bring that up again. On Crypto Bros, right here on YouTube, um, we actually talked about um, Bitcoin and a Bitcoin ETF and kind of what the differences were. So actually, what I'm going to do to answer your question is I'm going to refer you to that podcast because I do that episode because I do feel like that question is specifically addressed within the Crypto Bros podcast. So um, thank you for asking the question because whether it was intentional or not, you actually are helping to point our viewers towards the Crypto Bros podcast, which I really appreciate with my bro brother Crypto Bringer. I don't think there were any other questions. Um, now, uh, oh, love the, this is an epic photo right here. Shout out to the uh, Harmonauts with uh, Harmony One about to make a new all-time high very soon. More Harmonaut uh, photos to come. There are more in on my phone. Um, and the 1H bar chart. You know, love doing custom, custom charts, uh, relativity charts. So um, check me out on Crypto Bull God on Twitter. So with that being said, uh, as I always do on my podcast, in closing, please join me in a moment of silence for all of those I have attempted on multiple occasions to get into crypto and have remained ignorant. Thank you. Peace out.